Howdy. So um, this would be, without a doubt, the uh, most indication I have seen yet that they are intending in invoking Article 5. And for those that don't know, Article 5 is basically uh, where the NATO has a policy that if one of the countries gets attacked, they all get attacked. So in other words, if a NATO country gets attacked, then all the other NATO countries has to pony up and defend the NATO nation that got attacked. So that's what Article 5 essentially says. And, um, you know, there's a lot of back and forth on whether or not uh, the whole situation uh, involving Russia and Ukraine, uh, the intent of that, you know, I'm I'm starting myself to question whether or not the U.S. and other allies has um, has taken advantage of the time and the distraction with the conflict between between Israel and Hamas to all of a sudden make sure that they get as much equipment and and supplies uh, into Europe uh, as they possibly can. And this certainly is an indicator of such. Um, so as you see the headline, and of course, I'll put the link for the article in the description and in the first comment. Um, this is a pretty big indicator right here. A NATO plans military Shenzhen, okay? And Shenzhen zone is an area where people can just more or less freely travel. Um, so they're talking about wanting to do the same thing for the military. Uh, the article goes on to say NATO's European logistics chief has urged nations on the continent to establish a military Shenzhen zone to allow for the rapid movement of troops, equipment, and ammunition in the event of war with Russia. We are running out of time, said uh, Lieutenant General Alexander Solfrank, told Reuters in an interview published on Thursday. He said, what we don't get done in peacetime won't be ready in case of a crisis or a war. Sol Frank is in charge of NATO's Joint Support and Enabling Command, a facility in the German town of Ulm that coordinates with movement of the bloc's men and material across the entire continent, while JSEC was established in 2021 to streamline preparation for a potential war with Russia. Its work is still frustrated by national level regulations, Solfrank explained. Moving ammunition across European borders often requires special permits, while large transports of troops or equipment could require advance notice, he added. Solfrank suggested European countries should set up a military Shenzhen zone to remedy these issues, referring to the agreement that allows free travel between most EU states. Sol Frank is not the first military official to highlight the bloc's logistical and bureaucratic issues in Europe. Uh, we do not have enough transport capacity or infrastructure that enables the rapid movement of NATO forces across Europe, Ben Hodges, who commanded the U.S. Army in Europe until 2017, told Reuters last year. Different countries have different railway gauges, Hodges pointed out, adding that German rail operator Deutsche Bahn only has the capacity to move one and a half armored brigades, around 4,000 troops, 90 tanks, and 150 armored vehicles at any one time. Moving by road presents different obstacles, Reuters reported, noting that a group of French tanks heading to Germany to Romania for an exercise last year were stopped because their weight exceeded German road traffic regulations. Even if these tanks were allowed to pass through Germany, they would be physically unable to cross Poland due to the poor construction of bridges in the country, according to a separate report by Breaking Defense. NATO currently has 10,000 troops in eight battle groups stationed, stationed across Eastern Europe. General, Gen I can't speak today. Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg announced last year that he aims to back up these forward deployed forces with 300,000 high readiness troops in reserve. Under Stoltenberg's plan, 100,000 of these troops would be able to reach the battlefield within a week, while the remainder would arrive a month later. 
although Russia has repeatedly warned that NATO has made itself a de facto participant in the Ukraine conflict by providing Kiev with weapons, training, and intelligence, Moscow has not threatened the bloc with war. Nevertheless, Saul Frank argued that NATO must prepare itself for such a conflict. We need to be ahead of the curve. We have to prepare the theater well before Article 5 has to be invoked, he told Reuters, referring to the bloc's common defense clause. So, I mean, this, it really does seem to me, it just screams to me that what they are actually trying to do is um, put everything in place so they can invoke it. I'm sure that military intelligence knows way, 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 way more than I know. But I have a feeling that there are some decisions that have already been made and now it's just a matter of the logistics, getting everything in place and then kicking the ball off. I don't know. Like I say, this stuff is really confusing to to try to analyze, to try to summarize, to try to even get an idea of what we could be looking at and or how far into the future we can be looking at it. I think it's supposed to be confusing. I think that's just one more thing to consider when wondering, quote unquote, what time we're in because of the mass levels of confusion and especially around uh, international conflict. The, and I'll say it again, the wars and rumors of wars, they are at, I don't, I probably jumped around there a little bit. I, I'm sorry. I accidentally pulled up a menu. I, I didn't intend to. Um, but the wars and rumors of wars are at an all time level. And I don't see anything changing. I just don't. I don't think it will, but I uh, wanted to make sure my screen was because <laughs> I know I saw a bunch of flashy stuff when the menu came up and I closed it. But anyway, I'm going to get out of here. I'll, I'll leave this article, uh, the link to it, description, first comment. And, um, you know, I really do think that um, that they are setting up for war. So I know I kind of go back and forth on this. But again, it's really, really hard to read. Um, when I say when it's hard to read, I'm talking about the uh, actual situation because there is so much uh, misleading information and plain old misinformation going on. And, you know, you've got people on one side that just want to downplay it. You got people on the other side that want to take every single article and become an alarmist about it. Um and so it's really hard to gauge and, and it, the information gets so corrupted and it, by the time it gets to the general public at this point that you really can't, you really can't gauge anything. And, and when you do gauge stuff, you still have to do so with the mindset that you might have to change your viewpoint dependent upon future information, future data. So that's the biggest thing right now. Don't get set in stone on anything because you're likely to find out there was a curveball or two thrown in there. So just keep an eye on this situation. Keep getting ready. I've never ever said stop getting ready, you know. Um, what I'm just saying is don't let these YouTubers get you running around with your hair on fire because... They're doing it to make money. They're using people to make money. It is what it is. Anyway, keep an eye on it. See you later for the live show. Yep, there will be a live show regardless of the holiday. Um, I'll see you tonight at 8 Central Time. Shalom.